Greetings, mortals. I stumbled upon a uh, good recipe that I'm satisfied with for weathered and worn wood. And uh, this has kind of come across as I've started working on my Warcry starter set terrain. And uh, what's great about the pieces that come in that set is that the wood pieces, um, while lumbered, which is a little bit different than some of the uh, pieces that I've uh, constructed myself, um, provide a fantastic kind of level of detail for this sort of painting. So um, it will be fairly, It's this is not rocket science, uh, but I stumbled on this because I was just looking in my set what I had for a gray that I could use for the wood, and this is what I've found. Um, I've primed this in a skeleton bone color um, or dust color, but this could be white, could be black, etc. We're going to be going over it with uh, other colors in full. So, um, but uh, I used uh, a warp fiend gray. I was just looking for a gray in my set, and this was it was either this or a bluish gray. Um, I didn't have anything that was pure, you know, kind of neutral or even a slightly creamy gray, maybe a little bit like Rackarth flesh that I, is my other color. Uh, this is slightly lighter in tone. Um, and then we've got Agdrax Earthshade as a wash. And then um, unexpectedly bright, a Terminata Stone. This is only a dry paint I uh, have. Uh, I'm sure there's some other ones that could work for this. But I always love the kind of little yellow in this. I use it a lot for my desert um, dry brushing. But then also uh, this yellow tint always works really well as uh, a color on, on, on the top. So uh, we're going to get started. And... Again, not that this is highly complex, but um, I had a few people I explained it to you and, and uh, wanted me to give them a little bit more. So we're going to start uh, actually with both the Warp Fire Gray and the Rackrath Flesh. Now, I do things a little bit different um, It's because I'm a little impatient, but this is also terrain. So you could certainly take this and put it on a, on a wet palette and... Um, Water it down a bit, which you could. Uh, you can also, you know, just get your brush a little wet um, before getting into the into the rack art or into the warp fiend. Um, but I'm gonna go straight over top, getting all the crevices. Now, this is on thick, so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of take it and I'm gonna keep transferring it, spreading it around, so I don't lose any of that detail. I've got a lot of surfaces and areas to cover um, so you just keep kind of pulling it out and moving it down. Now while this is still wet and you can do this little bits at a time while this warp fire warp fiend gray is still wet I'm gonna grab a little rack earth flesh and I'm gonna focus in um, on the center here where steps you know when people get onto stairs they're probably going to like quick come up here, hop a couple steps and then go to the middle of it. So I'm going to be focused in those areas to lighten it up a little bit. And so here I'm just starting to blend that in to where I've already got the gray, the warp fiend gray. So rack our flesh will be a little hard to see in this light in the middles and warp fiend gray on the side. Now I'm going to take just a few minutes to finish up uh, all of this and then we'll be back and I'll, um, well, let me do a few more here. So again, I'm going to take the rack earth and I'm going to focus in on the middle part and blend it out to the sides, leaving the warp fiend gray more prominent on the edges you can see the Rackarth is get, gaining a little bit of that purple tone, uh, which it already naturally has kind of a nice tone for that anyway. And then we're going to go back. Etc. So I'll finish this up uh, and we will let the all of this dry and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, I've finished a base coating, this stairways, this wooden stairway from Warcry. 
And uh, as you can see, I've got kind of the, the warp fiend on the edges and it moves into the rack hearth here. I have another stairway or ladder rather that I made out of sprues. Um, you can see that in another video that I have on the channel. Um, and I've done it similarly here. And again, um, the primary use of the ladder would be down the center, hand over hand, etc. when people are using it. Maybe some on the sides, but primarily here. So I've just lightened it there because that's going to be more worn down than the edges are. All right, so our next step then is to shade it. Now, you could probably thin this with um, uh, Lamy and Medium. Um, I go on full pot because that's kind of how I roll. Um, and what this will emulate is kind of um, the moldiness and stuff down in the recesses, and it'll, it'll let the the grain uh, really pop on the table. Now, the Agrax Earthshade kind of gives the wood some of its brown back, um, but if you wanted to, you could also dab in um, some uh, Athonian Camo Shade um, or any color. Um, the Camo Shade would uh, be reminiscent of maybe a more moist and mold-ridden place or our um, lichen and, and uh, moss might be growing on it. Um, but there's a lot of different types of kind of growths in the realm. And so you could do any color you want and add to this as long as you maybe the primary is the Agrax and you just spot, you know, treat it with some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on there, um, show you how I get that on there, and then uh, we'll let it dry after that and we'll come back and uh, do the dry stuff, dry rushing. Now make sure you get the fronts and all the edges. We're not going to do the underside on this because we need to let the um, the wash dry at kind of this top angle so that it can um, stay in the detail and not run out of it. So do a little bit there. We're going to go ahead and let that dry for now. All right. We've allowed the wash to dry. And uh, what I love about Agrax and some of these others is that kind of tone that it starts to take um, as it gets just super matte. Um, sometimes you can get gloss if you didn't shake up your wash uh, very well. Um, but in this case, you can see it's, it's all dried. It's gone down to a real kind of dark and muddy and muted and matte kind of feel to it. And I like that very much. All right, next thing we're going to do is the dry brush. So we can close that up. And now, as I mentioned, I use the Terminata Stone for this. It was the only dry I had on hand, so I lucked out in that regard. If I had had some others, I might have used something a little more gray. Um, but I do think that the kind of brightness of this and all of their dry paints are a little pastel. And it seems a little counter counterintuitive, but it's, it's used in such small amounts, or you see it in such small lines, that... Uh, it ends up, you know, just allowing it to get really bright for that purposes. And when you're working with terrain, especially on the tabletop, that brightness can be really good for seeing that detail from far away. Now, um, I've just got kind of a flat um, 
uh, brush. You can use a makeup brush. You can use whatever you, uh, anything with kind of like um, very more stiff bristles or, you know, in the case of a makeup brush, they're a little softer. But, um, uh, and all I do with, what I like about the, the dry uh, paints is that I just need to get a little bit on the end. I won't close that. And then you're going to, to work it out on a paper towel. Um, and you can go with, you know, I go back over the same spot because what you're doing is basically you're working the paint further up the brush. You're spreading it out so that when your bristle, your, they, sorry, when your bristles bend against the terrain, it just starts leaving a little bit just on the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to cover all of it, but I'm going to focus in a few areas. I'm going to focus down the middle, as I talked about. And I'm going to catch some of my edges so that that kind of outlines the piece. And it will be very quick and easy to kind of get everything. Now, I suppose because these are steps, they're not going to... And you can always see that if I focus in the middle, I already get start, start seeing some of that. And if I focus on the edges... And it starts outlining that piece and you see what's there. All right. I'm going to load my brush up a bit more. And the pigment is so thick that they're just in kind of chunks in there and you're just grabbing a little bit off the edge. that one off a little bit more and I'm mostly trying to go against the grain literally the grain that they've molded in here And again, my most now that I've kind of gotten everything a little bit, the most important thing is that I kind of get it brighter along this middle part of the section. I don't want to go uh, super bright in terms of just having a big glob or you know that sort of thing, but. The other thing, and maybe this brush is a little bit too thick, but what I want to do is get really kind of to the back of the stair and drag it forward so I'm mostly just getting in that space but front to back. Because when you, when you step through stairs, your foot goes through and you're dragging and you're dragging and you're dragging. So... All right, so you can see where kind of that wear and tear is, is starting to show where people are walking and how they're walking. And maybe this bottom stairs a little bit more worn across the thing because people might come from this way and they might come from this way and they go up. And we make sure we get all of our edges a little bit more to finish it up. And this um, kind of grabbing these edges also frames kind of the tones um, where you've got, you know, you're bright in the middle, dark, and then back out to the bright again. And uh, kind of going sideways on this here. And I think we have it. I could do some more dry brushing here in these kind of vertical pieces. I don't know if it's that important. Um, it's nice to keep some things dark so that the, the light stuff pops even more against it. So, well, there we go. That, uh, I guess I'm gonna try it real quick too. Um, I used uh, my the kind of my sprue constructed ladder and I'm gonna do something similar here. 
So I'm going to try and get some dry brush all across it. Now I don't really know if this is going to work as well with this shape. This is more of like a hewn log shape. So it doesn't act the same way as, um, as the stairs and the stuff with grain. And as you can see in some of my other sprue construction, I went more of like the yellow new wood uh, kind of in the recesses because that's kind of where the, the ax has dug in. And then the, on the edges, it's the bark that's been left. And that's all right, but it's not very aged. So this feels like it's been, was very recently created. So I'm using the same technique, um, you know, of, of colors and washes on this more log wood um, to see if it gives me a similar effect. And again, I want to cover these edges. And then I want to focus even more down this middle. Now, I think it works. I don't know that it's as sound of an effect. Like, it doesn't read as much that logs would have this same kind of worn. I mean, they do get gray. They do, um, they do weather like that, but maybe it's just a little bit different. So, it could make, it could pass for, you know, just keeping everything in the same tone. It may grow on me. I need to kind of sit with a bit more. But when it comes to the wood grain stuff, I think this works really well. It's, uh, you know, uh, unexpected kind of combination of the purple gray with the warp fiend and the terminus stone as the kind of washed out kind of highlight of that. So anyway, I hope this helps as you're kind of working on uh, aged wood for your war cry terrain or any kind of. Uh, wargaming terrain, etc., dioramas. Um, yeah, look forward to sharing more videos on this channel. Like, subscribe, um, come find me on Twitter, and we'll talk to you soon.